Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building this morning. Yes, indeed. Tamika Mallory, my son, what's and Minister on? Kirsten John Foy. Welcome, guys. Oh, what's, what's, going going on? On? what's going on, King? We, we heard y'all making all that noise uh, last week at the debates. <laughs> I text Tamika. I said, I know your voice when I hear it. <laughs> we will tax the hell out of the wealthy to make this a fairer country and to make sure it's a country that puts working people first. Thank you, Mayor de Blasio. You sure. All right. I know Tamika's voice. I was, I was like, like, it actually is her, because I was at the debate, <laughs> yeah. and I was actually talking to Tamika. I was like, where y'all at? Where you sitting? I'm going to sit back here. And we were trying to figure out how to get you seats next to us. You don't need to be near us. <laughs> you know, wherever we are, it's always Lord, rough. Out, in serious way. Lord, I'd have to walk out with y'all. Do they kick y'all out? sit there. Yeah. yeah, but they <laughs> really? made they are the ones that created a protest. It okay. really wasn't. We did not go there intending to protest. But when de Blasio, the mayor of New York City, started talking about um, how his record on stop and frisk, saying that he ended stop and frisk and all of this. In other words, trying to tout his record around police and community. And we were like, ah, mm. so these two yelled out fire Pantaleo. They only said it once a piece. It wasn't a big deal. They said fire pants little security guard comes down and he asked us to just be quiet. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, first of all, let's not even get into the fact that when he came down the aisle, he was just making sure his presence was known. And the black folks, particularly in the audience, were like, are you looking for the people who were yelling? He no. didn't ask them. Yes, yes. yes he did. Yes, yes. they did. Yes. Then he go right yes, there. Right there. Boy, right I hate, right them, I hate them kind of niggas so much. He right there mm -hmm. at him. Like, look, get him. So Why did they do that? I, because I hate them kind of niggas so much. But we had church for a minute mm -hmm. in between mm -hmm. that because right. we started saying to them, do you know who Daniel Pantaleo is? Right. Eric Garner, this and that. And then, we, and then, you know, we told them some choice words about mm -hmm. being a self-hating Negro. That's right. Mm -hmm. And eventually they got caught. And in fact, when the police came back, the one woman who actually created the situation was like, no, you know, they're fine. They didn't do anything, but it's already too late. Yeah. And that's what we do all the time. Us, yeah. And it's interesting because where I was sitting, people didn't even understand what was being said as mm -hmm. y'all were marching out fire Pantaleo. I had to explain who Pantaleo was because mm -hmm. they didn't know. I'm, I'm like, is this just a New York thing? Mm. Because it shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, the name Pantaleo is a New York thing, but mm -hmm. once you start invoking the name Eric, Eric Garner, Garner yeah. right. people right. are like, oh, so that was the name that we use to catch the lady, you know, the sellout's attention. Do mm -hmm. you even know who Pantaleo is? That's the dude that who killed Eric Garner. Garner. Right. Then it clicked, oh, shit. Let me I did be, something. Yeah. Let me back up. Right. right. So what happened during Cory Booker? Because I saw people saying, why would they right. yell and scream during the black candidates? So that's the whole point. We didn't create that moment. We Again, it was not a planned protest. So once they yelled out fire Pantaleo, it was done. Mm -hmm. the, the security guard came. The Negroes told on us. And it was all calm. Everything was peaceful. No big deal. The cops came later, maybe right. like 10 to 15 minutes later. Right. So they had a delayed reaction. I guess they decided that they wanted to throw us out. And when they came, they were specifically trying to take out Kirsten. And mm. and so you hear, and mind you, I didn't even yell. I just want the record to reflect that I wasn't even the one yelling. We heard but you. No, but no, we heard you. No, but no. But, no. <laughs> no, but, but when the cops no. came back and started saying they wanted to take one of our people, I started being like hell to the gnaw. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to take all of us or none of us. And then Nah, she didn't only do that. She was like, nah, you ain't boom, threw her body <laughs> like Yeah, she said we're going to form a, a <laughs> gate around her. Right? She <laughs> formed the gate. She grabbed onto the chair in front. So now it's on. It's it's on yeah, that, that that, I mean, when, and so when they started taking us out. We weren't gonna be like, excuse me, with the church finger mm -hmm. up and go out quietly. Mm -hmm. We had to pro. We had to really make sure our voices were heard, and we started chanting loudly. And at that point, it was during Cory Booker's time, but that was right. because of the you. police Got coming you. later. Right. Cory Booker's like, I, mean, I wasn't there. But you know what? It's interesting. It did have an impact because, like I told hmm. you, I feel like after that. The whole Pantaleo situation got addressed in Eric Garner it did. It several did. times throughout. Bill De Blasio got confronted mm -hmm. about right. Pantaleo right. still yeah. having a job, and his response right. was, right. "Well, his response that, with it was that there would be justice within thirty within days." Within thirty right. days. Right. Well, firstly, I want to thank the protesters, which was all BS. You know, I want to thank the protesters for you know raising this and fighting for justice. Blah blah blah. I'm confident there'll be justice in New York for thirty in the next thirty days. Hit the problem with that is you've been mayor from day one mm -hmm. right. for five years right. now. Right. You right. have been denying the fact that you had the authority 
to have this officer fired. So you've had other officers reprimanded for less. One officer got suspended for invoking de Blasio's name while writing a ticket mm. to someone. So you mean to tell me that officer can get reprimanded, but the man that murdered Eric Garner mm -hmm. on international television can enrich himself off of he the got, taxpayer yeah. dollars for the last five years. Not only be okay, he's wealthier today mm -hmm. as an officer than he was before. He's gotten he's gotten raises, he's accrued what? time off, yeah. he's been sitting behind a desk mm -hmm. getting his paycheck mm -hmm. for 1,847 days, mm -hmm. 263 weeks. He's been getting more and more wealthy after the fact, and the mayor has done nothing to even hold this man at baseline, mm -hmm. they, he's allowed this man to enrich himself. Mm -hmm. I think they be hoping that people forget about these kind of cases. I think that's why protests and stuff is so important. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, that's exactly that's, that. yeah, that's what I tell people all the time. They be like, yo, what are y'all protesting for? What does it do? And then when you look at situations like this, you see what actually happens. Like, mm -hmm. this protest caused that to be one of the focal points of the debate which caused him to put his back against the wall, which in the next two days... He has to act. You know what I'm saying? And right. two days later, you, we, we hear that there's a suspension. Right. I mean, to me, it's an insult that he's only getting suspended Yeah, what do y'all feel about years. the suspension? I mean, it's an insult. Like, the man's supposed to be... Is it, this is a criminal. Period. Forget... Mm -hmm. Bottom line, he's supposed to be charged and have criminal charges against mm -hmm. him and be going to trial right now. But the fact that we had to wait five years and we had to put it on a national TV, have him get drilled about it on national TV is sad, but it, this is what protests look like, this is what democracy looks like, this is why I tell people all the time, you just can't be silent and say, yo, I ain't doing that, I ain't pro, you gotta do something. There has to be some level of outrage or something to show the the world, to show these elected officials that we just not gonna sit by and just let you do what you want. Right, it can't be business as usual. And it's important to, to note that we're not saying that our protest is the only reason no, why no. you saw action happen mm -hmm. in two days because Erica Garner, God rest her soul, um, Eric Garner's daughter, she was out there regularly mm -hmm. for the for, for up until she passed away fighting for her father right. Gwen Carr who's close to all of us mm -hmm. you know she's been out there advocating for her family Emerald right. Gar I mean mm -hmm. you can go on and on with his family members who have continued to uphold Eric Garner's name and and therefore all of this is just an extension and I think that it being on the national stage again people who didn't know what we were saying mm -hmm. they know now right. they are very clear now and that's the that's what de Blasio needs because because you cannot run for mayor, for excuse me, for president of the United States of America, and you can't take care of business in your particular city where you're mayor, especially understanding the relationship between black and brown people with police, specifically black folks with police across this country. We need to know that you're going to be the type of president who is going to hold police officers accountable right. because we see this stuff happening mm -hmm. all across the country right. every single day. That's right. That's right. Now, Kirsten, you used to be a supporter of de Blasio. I used to work for him when he was a public advocate. Mm -hmm. Look, he's been he's 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 made a, a 180 degree transition from where he was on police accountability as public advocate. When he was public advocate, he 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 fought for independent prosecutorial authority for the CCRB, independent budgeting for the CCRB, which is the Civilian Complaint Review mm -hmm. Board. Most people don't know the Civilian Complaint Review Board is an agency that is housed inside the NYPD. Really? I've, I've used them before. Yeah. Let's be clear. Yeah. I definitely they had get gone and complained budget. and had to have a whole hearing where I went in and confronted the officer who was disrespectful right. to me. I did all of that. So it works? Mm -hmm. Well, well the it mediation, you? Did, did your mediation Yeah, it was a work? mediation. I will say the woman that did the mediation, um, I don't know what happens after that, but she did side with me in that because he was still mm -hmm. being disrespectful even during the mediation. Right. And I guess the more times that that happens to an officer where people are complaining right. and going through the whole process, because mm -hmm. I was like, look, I'm not going to just do nothing. Mm -hmm. I went online, sure. filed a complaint, did the mediation, showed up. He was still disrespectful. She told him, she was like, you're still being disrespectful in right. this room, so I can't imagine how you treated her when you stopped her. And right. she did did say that so and right. they did yeah. throw out the ticket and everything but what happens right. after that though you yeah know? i don't know what they happens throughout the ticket well and yeah i he mean continues to go back he to work see he here the, that, that, me over. That, that, <laughs> right. that, that brings us really? back that brings Sorry. us back to the problem with the the civilian complaint review board as an institution being housed inside the mm -hmm. nypd they get their funding from the nypd they get their spacing their resources their infrastructure from the nypd 
And the, and Bill de Blasio had a problem with that when he was public advocate. He's been mayor for five years and has done nothing to advance the cause of independent oversight for the, the, the NYPD. Not to mention the fact that he has he has done a reversal on Giuliani era, era policies, making Giuliani uh, uh, a former mayor, a Republican, you know, uh, radical, uh, look progressive on right. policing. Wow. Well, he right. has gone to court to defend the police officers' right to withhold their disciplinary records from the public. Mm. Giuliani wasn't even with that. Giuliani was like, look, I'm going to release the disciplinary, disciplinary records of officers that have murdered people or gotten in trouble, and if you don't like it, take me to court. Mm. That was leadership. This man's like, no, I'm going to go to court on the side of the officer and- to preserve their right to... To, to, to withhold their, to hide, their, yeah. To yeah. hide right. their records and their true, you know, record as an officer from the general public. And um, Giuliani, he actually fired an officer who used the chokehold in the Bronx on a young man by That's the name right. of Anthony Baez. That's right. He fired an officer named uh, Lavodi. Um, so it's like if we can look right. at Giuliani and right. say, well, he at was doing he a little that. bit yeah. better Come on policing. And then de Blasio, someone who ran on police community relations, mm-hmm. police That's accountability. Right. You know, we I know we supported him. I was a part of helping to raise uh-huh. money for him, for young professionals, mm-hmm. the whole thing. And it's like, what happened to you, bro? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you did the switching bait. On well, what us. happened to him was that the police turned their backs on right. him During and the they first... protested him. Right. And he responded to their protest right. and he folded to them mm-hmm. and he forgot that black people are the ones that gave him the job in the first place, thinking that he could kowtow to a few key black people and then keep the rest of us quiet. That's right. You know, he could march his family out there and use them as validation for his conservative policies right. and keep the rest of us quiet and that nothing was going to happen. Right. <laughs> Bro made a serious mistake. Question, how much responsibility does Eric Holt and uh, President Barack Obama have in the Eric Ghana case? Because didn't they didn't they promise justice? I lay it on them as Come well. On. I mean, right. you know, Eric Holder, he, they should have fired him. I mean, this has just been a passing of the buck. That's what mm-hmm. we're watching is everyone is passing it down. So there's nothing else to say except yes, they should have fired him. And the truth of the matter is, as much as I love President Obama, happy birthday yesterday, and all of that, under Obama, many of the hashtag names that we call, they happened while he was president in yeah, terms yeah, of police yeah. killings. Mm-hmm. Many of them happened under Obama. So, you know, the system as it currently is does not work, will not work. And you almost could any president could be in place if they don't have a very serious and radical thinking in terms mm-hmm. of shifting policy and shifting what we see. It's just like not gonna get any better mm-hmm. you know? I would suggest the system is working it's working, it's working the, the way that they the say the way it's designed right. to work yeah. it's just not us, delivering though. justice right. to us and in the, as it relates to Obama you know they played a very dangerous game with the Eric Garner case they attorney general who was you know the first black female attorney general Loretta Lynch right. came out That's of true. the eastern district the eastern district is the is the federal jurisdiction that investigated the Garner case that's Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, Long Island. She went from being the head of the Eastern District to investigate the case to becoming the attorney general. So she had that case in full view of herself in her mm-hmm. office. Mm-hmm. She was intimately involved in it, but they played a real slick game. They didn't want to be the ones to prosecute the right. cops. They rather have the Hillary Clinton Justice Department prosecute the cops. So they sat on the case expecting that Hillary was going to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after Hillary won, then all of these cases that they were really holding back on, then they could let a white person then, you know, move forward with prosecution, prosecuting these cases. What happened? Well, the world turned upside down. Everything blew up. And now all of these cases that were outstanding just collapsed. And we knew the mayor, that's the other thing. The mayor said, oh, I was waiting for the Justice Department. We, we believed that the Justice Department was going to do the right thing. Bruh, what nation, what country have you been li- living in for the last two years that you believe that the Trump Justice Department right. is going to deliver that's justice right. no to the black community, no especially on one of the highest profile police killings in the country? Ain't going to happen. So now you're telling me either we stupid, mm. it's not really raining, or your judgment is just that ridiculously garbage that you can't 
that you believe that the Trump Justice Department is going to deliver justice to the Eric Garner family. He peed on your head and told you it was raining. That's basically. Right. So he acted yeah. like he had no authority to be able to fire him, but then somehow they were able to suspend him. Yeah. They're saying yeah. the, pol- the so technically the police commission mm-hmm. has the authority, but the police commissioner works sits- for the mayor. Thank you. <laughs> right. Bottom line, you the boss. Right. You, you the always boss. have the authority. You call it. Because I know that's what happened that day after he sat on that TV and they <laughs> called him out a thousand times. Mm-hmm. That man picked up that phone and said, man, I don't know do what something. we got. Something well, got come to happen. Immediately. Come on. But how long is he suspended for? Do we know? 30 days. 30 days. And then after 30 days, he's back to work yeah. and everything. If, unless, it, he unless, he's, fired. So, unless he's fired. Right? Unless he's fired. So the process, the way the process stands now is that the judge, the NYPD deputy commissioner that's in charge of NYPD trials, mm-hmm. She came back with her recommendation that he should be fired. Due process says Judge now, Maldonado is her Judge name. Judge Maldonado, exceptional jurist. She came back with her, her recommendation. Now, both sides have two weeks to respond. The, the officer's side, Pantaleo's side, has two weeks to respond, and the CCRB, the Civilian Complaint Which Review Board. The CCRB board has already said that, that we they don't feel need, he should be fired. That's right, and they don't need two weeks. So, but. They so the officer is entitled to the two weeks to respond. Then they pre- present their response to the judge. She packages it all in a in a final report, and then gives the final report to the commissioner for then the commissioner to make his final decision. All of this stuff is just is just non binding. Right. It's it's a recommendation. Mm-hmm. The police commissioner has the ultimate authority to decide whether or not Pantaleo should be fired according to them. We believe the buck stops with the mayor, but they've been hiding behind the commissioner, and that's what the process basically looks like. I would never understand why black why black elected officials are so afraid to do things that directly help black people. Black people. You know why? Because it's a sick mentality. It's a sickness because we think when we help our own that it, it, shows, it shows something to the other people like, or we helping their own look. That's why we didn't want to put them in. So mm-hmm. we want we want to appeal to our slave masters mm-hmm. so much that we do anything not to help our own people. We'll right. help anybody but our own people. And it's so sad. When you look at this situation, it's no way in hell that five years later we talking about this man just got suspended for 30 days. Like, it doesn't even make sense. You're absolutely right. So when we say this Black Lives Matter, like, it really, this is a real question. Like, it's not, a, this is not a statement. This is a question in America because it's not a statement. Nobody has shown us that Black Lives really matter in America. Mm-hmm. That's real. Yeah. The Blasio got a great distraction now, though. Well. Because all of the mass shootings that happened. Well, between. yeah, yeah. He's part, because that was, I mean, the front page of the news. It was in mm-hmm. every paper, the Times, everything. So, I could see how, you know, not that I'm sure he's not glad that there was shootings. None of us are. But just take the spotlight off of me and let me work on this thing and see what to do. I mean, the bottom line is my position is with his rate and his uh, poll numbers being so low, if he actually fired uh, Pantaleo, they might actually right. yeah, come up a little right. bit. Yeah. He might, he might right. increase in the polls just for being bold enough to do something to get mm-hmm. people, right black thing. folks particularly, to take a look and say, oh, okay. This guy is doing, you know, doing he's his learning. job. Yeah, he's he's doing his job. But I don't know. The The reality is that you can do anything to black people. And we know that. That's we'll take fact. we'll take a chance with disrespecting mm-hmm. black people. And then we'll see, you know, if make sure we secure everyone else. And then we'll figure out how to go back later and kiss some babies in the churches. I know a few leaders that will allow me in and I can be friends with them no matter whether Mm -hmm. they did our communities wrong or not. And that's the same old trick that's been used so many times. And that's why every generation has to have people who are willing to put things on the line and sacrifice everything they have in order for change to be made and for the the dialogue to just be in our favor mm-hmm. it, even just that just That's for right. the conversation to be about the issues we care about because trust and believe there's some people who are looking at us like we crazy like you don't you don't that's an inappropriate time to protest you don't chant in a well, presidential debate right. yeah they I mean there's they kept saying to us there's a everything. time and a place you can't just do that so we put a lot on the line mm-hmm. to go out the way that we did but mm-hmm. it had to happen because the whole country 
needs to know who is running for president. And people who have other issues like the immigration community, mm -hmm. they made they, noise in yep. the debate as exactly. well about, right. you know, things right. with Joe they Biden. They get kicked right. out. They're not as loud as you, no. Tamika. The bottom I, one is, oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I want to ask you guys? Yeah. Based on those debates, because obviously we look at these debates and now who's going to go on to the next debates because there'll be less people on stage. Mm. Who do you guys think should go to the next step? Lord have mercy. Uh, it's only like, they can, it's only probably about five people that I even paid attention Mike, to. I saw you bigging up Marianne Williamson. Because uh, she was saying things truth. that really, she was saying so much truth that I, I never heard somebody right. say on that stage. Mm -hmm. Like she she broke it down right. to pretty much saying, like when you look at Trump, like he has harnessed everything negative about America. Mm. And and that's what that's what we've been we've been taught anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you look at music, hip hop and all that, we talk about the most negative stuff. If the people talking about the most negative stuff is the people that get bigots. And he's he's utilized that same formula mm. in the White House. Right. He's mm -hmm. running the White House like the mafia. Mm -hmm. Like he's telling you, look, go to jail, I'm gonna get you out, we're gonna get you expunged, just don't mm -hmm. tell on me. Long as you show me like he's literally saying it. The man was talking about Elijah Cummins house getting robbed. Right. Right. Like, and said, oh, oh, I'm so too sorry. Bad. Too bad. Too bad. Like, mm -hmm. like, this is crazy. This yeah. is the president of the United States talking like this. And he's utilized the same practices that we, they've utilized throughout history to get promotion and get things. So right. he's changed the whole dynamics. And it's going to take somebody who has that same dynamics on our side mm -hmm. to beat him. It ain't going to be the, hey, how are you to wave the hand and kiss the <laughs> oh, yeah. and it ain't gonna The work. language of politics is dead. It ain't going to work. Right. It, it's, it's done. It you got and, it. and she was so powerful because okay. not only did she deal with the, you know, the dark psychic forces that control, that's the, you know, to quote her, she also, when confronted about why she said half a trillion dollars, for reparations, she could break down she the math. She had the math. Yeah. She had a uh, she had a rational <laughs> breakdown for why she said America owed black people half a trillion dollars, which caught you know caught my attention. But I certainly think you know we need to have a serious conversation. And you know Elizabeth Warren, you know Bernie Sanders, they're talking the real good policy talk. Kamala Harris, although I have some some issues with her and her criminal justice record. She's a sister and she's powerful and she deserves to be on that stage. I think. What's your issues with her? With her? Well, you know, she she her, her criminal justice record in California is very mixed. If you know, and I'm being generous there. Mm -hmm. So she prosecuted parents for their children's truancy. She never prosecuted anybody, though. Well, she she, she implemented the truancy she, law, she, but she never she, locked right, anybody up. She, she, she exactly. Thank you for the clarification. But what she also what she failed to do was hold police accountable when she had the power to do so. The activist community in California is is really standoffish with her because every case that they brought to her, she walked away from or failed to 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 provide any justice. And I saw her at the Chicago Ideas uh, conference, and Tamika likes her, oh you know, God. where she ridiculed, He's been talking about she ridiculed <laughs> protesters that yeah. said, build more schools and less prisons. Build more schools and less prisons. And she said, well, I have a problem with that philosophy. Well, I don't know what kind of problem you could actually have <laughs> With, with that, that philosophy, you need to exactly. explain right. that to me exactly. a True. bit more before That's I'm comfortable. That's girl. So you, but she's you brilliant, and look, yeah. everybody. <laughs> I like it's, her. And I it's not you. really about you have to. There's a litmus test, but you have to be able to explain to the community what your record is. Mm -hmm. And I and I think she's earned the right to explain further what her record is. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and I like Julianne Castro, so that's who I would like. I like to Castro see, too. Mm -hmm. Like to see uh, on the stage. The rest of them are smoke and mirrors. But it's, it's, a, it's a healthy well, process yeah, to and, go and through. And it's a healthy conversation. I think Pete... Um, Buddha Buddha Jay is on. I like Pete. Like 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 to know Pete. Corey Booker, I like guys, Pete. Oh, Corey. Yeah. Corey, yeah. Corey, Corey Booker. Definitely. There's yeah. a bunch of... But there's yeah. some guys that were on the stage... I don't remember their names exactly, but, but there was some. There, there was some. I don't know exactly how they <laughs> made oh, it to the here. Democratic <laughs> yeah. side yeah. of this conversation I think that's because Elizabeth they are Warren conservative. Was like, Yo, I don't understand why y'all running for president if y'all don't have see a reason or see anything we could do. Y'all got right. so right. many boundaries. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We can't do anything. Right, right. I love yeah. when Bernie said. 
<laughs> he says, you know, right. He does the <laughs> finger. We love Bernie and his Bernie finger. Bernie and his finger. And he basically said Republicans have big ideas. Big right. ideas. <laughs> so big, he didn't say this, but it's true, so big that they just decided to separate children at the border. And, like, we don't even understand why. Why children are separated from their parents is the craziest mm-hmm. thing ever. Mm-hmm. I found a place in Harlem on 125th Street and Park Avenue, uh, I think it's called Cayuga. It's a it's one of the largest foster care programs in the country. They have more kids than many other foster care programs. They have about 200 children who were separated at the border right in Harlem. Wow. wow. Okay, and their parents, the kids, are the kids. it was a whole expose done through Rachel Maddow, and she was showing how the children, because someone inside, like a staff person, did a, a, a secret video, and the children was like, I don't know where my mother is. I haven't seen my mother. I, I, last time we were together, it was in Virginia. Right. Like, it doesn't make sense. That's but then so you see all of these stories coming out about sex trafficking. You see stories about... Um, what was it? The Navy SEALs who, Navy SEALs who there, there were some Navy people. SEALs who were caught with trafficking people and they had to be sent home. And my thing is, this country is so um, what we've seen in terms of the exploitation of children mm-hmm. and women. You can't tell me that that is not a part of what is going on mm-hmm. right now, because who is checking the checkers? Yeah, like, yeah, who's yeah. The United gonna... States basically kidnapped. 3000 children. Right. That's what Mary Ann Williamson said. She said and, Trump and, should be charged with kidnapping. Correct. And cannot reconnect them with it right. it was a crime against humanity and that's mm-hmm. what it really needs what's happening in the border is not really just a crisis right we have crises all the time in america this is a crime against the, uh, against humanity akin to genocide we trump decided that he was going to take latin children mm-hmm. from their parents and disperse them around the country and cannot be reunited with, started shipping the parents home without their kids, cannot be reunited with them. Yeah. That is... A, Lost a three, the record. Sounds like Lost slavery. Lost records. And That's guess exactly what? Exactly like That's slavery. exactly right. Well, it sounds like slavery, but also, and they say I'm, you know, I'm the crazy radical conspiracy theorist, wow. but... Epstein, his homeboy. Because, see, that's another thing. Trump is really good at throwing us off so we're not paying attention to what's going on. Absolutely. He started attacking Ilhan Omar and Rashida and Ayana, the squad. squad. He started attacking them right as the dialogue was going on about him and And Epstein Epstein. Mm -hmm. raping a woman who was saying that she was 13 13 years old at the time that this happened to her. Oh, you know, who going to take her virginity? Who was Mm going to, right. And and they were showing pictures and whatnot. And all of a sudden he started with this attack on Ilhan so we took our attention off of that and not and we did not focus on young children and young girls so his mm-hmm. boy Epstein has been indicted mm-hmm. for sex trafficking and having child porn on his computer like what are we talking about mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they separate in children like I you know I just don't mm-hmm. it makes me this thing this is something that I, it really bothers me how even black folks sometimes because of our trauma are like well you know we need to deal with mass incarceration we need to deal with mass incarceration and yeah. the fact that children are being separated mm-hmm. at the right. border we cannot let those two issues be separate from one another because these children are incarcerated. That's right. right. They're in That's cages. Right. Their parents are in separate cages in different places. Mm-hmm. So this whole notion that the immigration struggle, you know, to build on Tamika's point, is separate from our, our struggle, struggle. Mm-hmm. is just nonsensical. Our We are all, we are black people and brown people. We are people of color. But we are specifically targeted by this government on all levels for incarceration, for servitude in different capacities. So either you are selling oranges on the side of some highway somewhere after you've spent all night picking them in some field somewhere, or you are inside, you know, making phone calls for a credit agency locked up behind some prison gate. It's all the same system that that we are in servitude to. So you can't make a distinction. Mm -hmm. It's the same. And when children no matter what language they speak or no matter what country they originate from, when children can be ripped from their parents, that's an indication of the the shift in the the governing philosophy of, of our nation. 
we are now a fascist country. Right. Yes, period. period. That's all That's I've been it. saying America for the past two weeks. Yes, That's nation. Where we are. Why aren't people saying this? This is what and, we are. And, and if you study are. fascism, you, you, it's not the final solution was the final solution. Right. There were several, uh, uh, several solutions before Germany got to the final solution. Yes, man. Including a separation of children from their families. Mm-hmm. We have to recognize through his study history yeah. and, and, and recognize yeah. how we are reflecting the worst yes. of humanity in our current governance. So unless we all get past this BS about I don't speak that, they taking my job, or right. I, that's not my problem, they then they are job. coming for you next. That's right. Mm-hmm. They're coming for them first, come for and you then they're going to lull you to sleep, and, and then we're going to wake up, and our children gonna be in cages. are going to be in cages. I've been saying this oh, shit for, for two sure. weeks. I mean, you look at Khalid Proud, right. Right. I mean, they've already been in cages. Right. That's, what, that's why I get mad at Democrats, because they're not telling the truth. None no, of them. I don't care from Joe Biden to Senator Harris, Bernie Sanders. None of them are telling the truth. We don't feel too guilty about what we did. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it has to be done. I mean, I I just agree with that so much. And remember that I just said that Cayuga, where the children are in Harlem, that it's the largest foster care program. They just happened to have children who were separated because the kids needed somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. Well, the foster care thing is also an example of our children being locked up. Mm -hmm. You know, our children being in the system, being sold off for a a variety of things. You know, they say, well, there, there were issues with their parents. We have to keep on going back to the idea that poverty is violence. When people are living in depressed communities and depressed situations, what the things that may happen to them, it's no telling what can happen. People get on drugs, you know, people. Yeah. And I understand it's choices. But nonetheless, we live our communities, any place where there there are uh, is heavily populated by black and brown people and particularly, again, black people. It's very, very scary. What we go through. Just look at NYCHA here in New York. Mm-hmm. The New York City mm-hmm. Housing Authority people have rats running through. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, again, de Blasio, the mayor, and the record mm-hmm. the, now, and they poison all the damn kids with lead. That's they, been going on forever. That's what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Yeah. So wait, you want to be mayor. Uh, uh, you kid. So you were in charge of, you want to be mayor. So you want us to entrust you with all public housing <laughs> around the nation. Oh, around the whole Lord, nation. And look at your record here mm-hmm. with NYCHA. You want us to entrust you with FEMA, the mm. Federal Emergency Management Agency, and look at your absence of leadership in the Sandy recovery. There are people right now who still have not gotten permanent hot water in public housing in certain parts that are affected by Sandy. You want us to entrust you with the FBI? <laughs> you want us to give you the FBI and look at what you are allowing NYP? Like, there are so many examples why this particular mayor's Failure to provide adequate leadership here in the city of New York, again, to build off Tamika's point, disqualifies him. I want to just bring it right back to the mayor right quick. Disqualifies him from being president. Well, he don't stand a chance anyway. He's wasting everybody's time. He just needs to fire Panaleo. What I wanted to say was this is very key to me. Like, we've been watching these Democratic debates. Why are people scared to say black? Oh my yes. God, that was a whole. Like other it's really, thing. Yeah. it's really scared. It's yeah. bugged out to me. Like, say this is what we black people are dealing with. This, I say this urban. I say people of urban. color. Like, why? Right? It's like we color, right? we were sitting right. in the thing counting Everyone. the amount of times they said black. Probably about three times. Yeah. And Marianne Williamson was the yep. only one saying right. black. It was <laughs> right. no, and that's what made me catch because she understood that black people in America are well, dealing Beto, with. Beto was saying black. Beto every now and then. Uh-huh. Every now he he said it, but. She was she was adamant because she understood the reality we dealing with, and it's like you can't continue to want our votes. You can't continue mm-hmm. to think that you just gonna get our votes and you're not speaking directly to our issues. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Yeah, I you agree know? with that because even with Bernie, who I love, it's very difficult for some reason for Bernie to be able to talk about how his policies that I think are great great policy recommendations how they will impact the black community. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like he's saying it in a, and I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be dismissive of Bernie at all, but it's very all lives matter-ish. Like, mm-hmm. right, you know, right. like, 
everybody is going to be benefit helped from, by benefit yeah, right. from these particular mm-hmm. policies and you know and people who are you know poor people or whatever but i need him to speak especially as a black woman who is basically the 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 backbone of the community black women carry everything on our backs we need you to be able to speak about your policies from a perspective of how it will impact black people and black women the reality is that if you raise, you know, I was listening to Jesse Jackson one day. He was in it was he was at a conference recently and he was saying that we use the language black folks being at the bottom. And he said, well, what is at the bottom? The bottom is the foundation. That's right. So we need not talk about our people as being at the bottom, but rather that they are at the foundation of this country. So if you mm. lift the foundation, wow. then mm. everything will be, everyone will benefit, everyone will be lifted. So if you can't talk about those people most impacted, then that's a little, that's a little scary for me. I hit Sean King and said, can you please Tell bruh, I need but, some yeah, more yeah, blacks. Yeah, yeah but uh, I mean, I it's not gonna happen. It, it this is his second go round, and it's not. That, oh, I don't need him to I say it because that's Elizabeth Warren is saying it. Kamala uh, Harris Elizabeth is saying it. it. I like Elizabeth. William, um, Marianne Williamson is saying mm-hmm. it. So if Bernie doesn't Corey feel Corey is saying it. If he doesn't feel motivated, then he's really telling. He telegraphed when people. I believe people when they tell me what they think of it. Mm-hmm. That's right. And I personally don't think Bernie can empathize or sympathize. That's just my observation. But there are candidates that, again, that I think aren't afraid to speak directly to black people. Now you see and those are the works. people. You see, this is what we what we try to tell people about activism all the time. Mm-hmm. We're not all on the same page yeah, either. We don't, we don't all everything. agree on yeah. every we fight issue. All day. All day. We're not walking in <laughs> a you. We fight all day. Yeah, but y'all ultimate goal is the liberation of black that's people. Right. That's all that's that matters. It. That's, that's right. and that's 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 where it's we unity, need. not uniformity, that's man. Right. We don't and, need and you. And to... We do our best not to fight right up here in front of <laughs> everybody because yeah. we getting ready to fight now because I can tell he's wrong about what he's saying <laughs> about Bernie. <laughs> can I ask y'all a question? Why do black people love Joe Biden so much? Well, like 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 like, like we questioned standard. Senator Harris about her record, but Biden is the author of the ninety four crime bill and the eighty eight crack laws. You know what? You know, you know why? Wait, it's oh, Obama. It's the Obama thing. Mm-hmm. And, right. Even before, and that, you know what? I've yeah. heard people say to me because when I've been discussing this, and they'll say, "Well, he's the person I think could win," that's, and that's and that what some too. people are saying. I don't well, believe that. Though. I don't believe that Not either. Because look at what we're saying. We're saying we want to compete for the racist vote. I don't want that Democratic Party. Word. I want a Democratic Word. Party that says, point. I need Word. to go to the other side Word. to get some of them. We need a Democratic Party that says, boom, to the if other side. If you just motivate and, us, and Joe Biden can win. is the guy that can reach over and grab a few of the more the racist. moderate yeah. races, yeah. that's not, that's not <laughs> a message. A moderate racist. That's, no, not, bro, you're that's right, what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. right. He wrote that, the crime bill. 88 crack laws. He remember Anita and Hill well, and, he and came the out. hearings. Like, yeah. yeah, but he's saying that that was not. But he check. is now saying that that was not the main cause for mass incarceration. Yeah, I couldn't believe right. the brother Come said on, that. Bro. Nah, couldn't crazy. believe it. Come on, bro. It like, ain't just that he wrote it. It's when the way he explained it. Oh, yeah. Like, when yeah. you listen to that Word. man explain it, on he the basically floor, yeah. said... We don't care that black people went through this. That's I know right. that. I don't yep. want to hear it. I don't really want to care about that. They going to jail now. Yep. I don't care and about the system it. that I don't created care about those predators. The system that created. Yep. We know and all that. But they going to jail now. Is there anything that he can say that would be redemption? I was wrong. 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 And working for President Obama, I had many nights to sit with him to understand even my own racism. And, and, that's what he and, could and say. Beyond that, yeah. Yeah. That's. I'm the minister, so I want to hear about the redemption of your soul. I want him to say, I'm going to introduce legislation to yes. now correct to repeal that. Yes. the crime bill. That's right. And here's how we're going to de- start the process of institutionalized decarceration. Yes. You know, that's what Hillary said yeah, here on The mean. Breakfast Club. Everybody got caught up in the hot sauce shit. Right. But she said that, hey, I wasn't in the administration when the 94 right. crime bill went, went through, but it did affect a lot of black and brown people, and I want to write that wrong. Mm-hmm. She said that verbatim. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, she waited a long time to say that. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, may not have been yeah. in the administration, but she yeah. was in bed with the man that helped it happen. That is true. So, you well, know, that's, that's a different... Well, that's debatable. Okay. <laughs> so, she might not have been. <laughs> now, now also, we, we, we had Dapper Dan up here, uh-huh. and, and you guys fought so hard <laughs> <My son. laughs> against Gucci. So what were your thoughts on Dapper? 
I you want to know my thoughts? Oh, Not you, yet, my song. Oh, okay. I watched, I watched your IG live. Watch your IG. <laughs> <laughs> what were your thoughts? You know what, I, you know what my thoughts are? My mm. thoughts are, that's just like the lady who turned around and said, you looking for the people <laughs> right. who was doing the, the, the protest? They right here, mm. right here. And that's, I'm going to just leave it at that. Because one thing, I'm understanding Dapper Dan's story mm -hmm. and knowing that so many of the people I love are super close to him too. And they tell me about how in, in, intelligent he is and what he's done for of the black folks and whatnot. I am not about to model the behavior that they want us to behave of us fighting in public. Mm -hmm. or, I'm not going to do that. But he knows that I 100% disagree with his position and some of the other people who are my friends that went to work with him on their new Gucci platform that we still have not seen anything except we did see one woman hired. Yeah, they hired a, a black, head of diversity. A head of diversity. We mm -hmm. saw that. But I know about... Anyway... So we so they, they so we saw that, but all of these other things they were supposed to be distributing money to different communities and you know and all of that I haven't seen anything. Perhaps I'm just deaf and dumb, but I haven't seen it. So, okay, my son. I mean, you know, I'm I'm gonna try to be. Nah, my son. We've seen you live already. Not what, 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 saying, you, what you the, feel? The reality is this, man. Dapper Dan is a legend. Man. He is. And when you look at what he's overcome, you look where he's came from, he is a success story. He is somebody, he is an elder. He is somebody that I've looked up to. And he disappointed me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I could say as a man. Like, I don't, I have no ill will to him, but I had a conversation with that man as a man. Mm -hmm. And he knows what he did. And that know? was... He told you that he wanted you to come with him and a couple of others along to that meeting. And when it he wasn't had meeting, just it wasn't just that. It was when we sat down and had a conversation and we explained to him what the issues were. Because he just said he's like, I know it's wrong, but I had to explain to him like this was a civil rights violation. Mm -hmm. Like these people have to be held to a standard. Like if you violate any other culture of people, nationality of people, if you do that to anybody else, they're gonna do something major. Mm -hmm. And we sat down with him, explained to him and say, Yo, listen, this is what you need to go, even if we wasn't there at the meeting, this is what needs to happen. And he said, oh, I'm not gonna say that. They're not gonna do that. I'm like, but why would you not tell, hold them accountable? Find out if they're gonna do it. That, oh, I'm not gonna say that, I'm just gonna leave it alone then. I'm gonna let y'all go on and do it. But this was after he had already had a meeting. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that. I'm confused, you called me. Y'all reached out to us to say y'all wanted us there, and then you come back with a a backdoor this, and you done did this, and oh, I'm not gonna say that, and they not gonna do that. How you gonna tell us the people that call for a boycott? Y'all didn't call for a boycott. I, think, I didn't hear none of y'all call for the boycott. So how do you have a meeting with people that never call for a boycott to end the boycott? I think people are so used to token activism, mm. so they call y'all and they're like, okay, as long as they're here, everything's fine. Right, right. but and they it know was the, it was the wrong right. group. Yeah, and and the, the wrong exactly. Group. And I just want to, I just want to, I just for the, the record, right? Group. Because you know, Floyd <laughs> Mayweather, um, all these people say, you know, they'll be done with this in thirty days. I've been doing it. I ain't stopped yet. Mm. Every day, I wake up and say, "F Gucci." So the reality is, we you. This is a whole different level of activism and being serious. Like this is serious. We ain't. We we are modeling with serious. Like you can't just disrespect us and violate us and then throw us some dog biscuits and say that we cool with that. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, it's no way that I could do anything with Gucci at this point because it it doesn't. It doesn't benefit me. If they do implement the plans they said they are going to do with the apprenticeships <coughs> and trying to help out black designers. Then but they that, but see that's another thing. They never said black. See, they do the same thing that happens on the, the DNC. It says diversity and, and mm -hmm. different cultures. It never said black. You harmed black people, right. but then you create organizations and you create all of these stuff for everybody else. That's real. Wow. You know, it's yeah. never it never directly impacts black people, and that's what they keep doing. That's that's, that's the same thing with real estate when they say it, opportunity zones. Exactly. And people got so excited about opportunity right. zones, and I was saying opportunity zones ain't for black people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's for people with money that can afford it. Exactly. That's just not for black people. They people can afford got so to hold on to those properties. For... You got to hold it for ten years, mm -hmm. and you got to be able to have the money. That's right. Like that, or that's MWBEs, they... minority and uh, that benefits women the business owners, white that, women. That's right. It's, I have my MWBE. Right. Well, go ahead. You you need to help some more sisters get their. Actually, that is the plan that I'm doing now. 
with the small business services. Yeah. That's, so, a real, that's real critical. Yeah, but we, that's do, why you we gotta, do a lot of stuff at the Juice Bar where they've actually come by and let people sign up for the services on the spot. And I try to make sure everywhere I go, I let people know that you should apply to get your MWBE because a lot of times what they do is white women who are married or in families with white men will get a lot of those contracts Absolutely. because they got their MWBE mm -hmm. and it's all set up. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you think the fight is fixed in 2020? Because I do. I think, think it's, it's fixed? I, I think it's above us now. You think it's above us? I'm being us. honest with you. I'm being dead serious. I, I, I actually think Donald Trump is going to be president Super until he free. dies. Right. I, you, nah. I'm I think being, we I'm have dead to be I think Donald Trump is going to be president until he dies. Because don't want to give up and have that attitude. Can I, can I just break down why that's not so unreasonable? Please. Because no, they think I'm crazy. No. You know he just added 13 new federal judges? Yes, I mean, he has 144 federal judges? It's because you have to look at the structure of our government and how it works. The Constitution it w is what governs <coughs> how many terms a president can serve. Yep. How do you change the Constitution? You need two-thirds of the states and then two-thirds of the Congress. Republicans control two-thirds of the state houses and the governor's mansions. It would be a question of whether or not they could get it through the Congress. They already have the courts. So it's... And by the way, we don't even have to get that extreme. They've already taken the presidency twice mm -hmm. in the last well, 20 years. Well, you definitely can't account George for Bush. Electoral College. Yep. Can't account for George for Bush and then again for Donald yep. Trump. Yeah. So they have the built-in mechanisms yeah. for controlling, seizing power back and shifting the government away from, they call democracy an experiment because they want us to know at any given point, they can add or subtract an ingredient here or there and take us in a different direction. Donald Trump has the well, courts, he has the Department of Justice, he has the Senate at this point, and he got Russian interference. And, he got and Russian. nobody gives a damn about the Russian interference the so much so that Mitch McConnell blocked two House election security bills yeah, last week. Like a mafia. And I tell people this all the time, like, we got to be serious about what we're doing. Exactly. Like, I don't see no candidate that going to get in the mud with Trump. <laughs> this Nobody, is the bottom line. No candidate is talking about the mud. severity of the situation. No. No. By the way, Trump already told y'all he's not going nowhere. Exactly. He said it three, four times. So, so he no is going, and you know why? Because shout out to Rosa Clemente and all of the Puerto Rican activists that went out there and showed you how to get rid of people. We would have to really turn this but, country yes, upside, upside down. down. I'm upside down. But that's what yes. he's calling and, for. Like, exactly. Yeah. That's what he's calling and the Women's anyway. March started that. Let's wait, just be wait. clear. I hope y'all ready because they they already they two shootings in twenty four hours. That's where they willing to take it. Yes, right. right? That's yes. where right. they well, willing that's, to that's take real it now. Yes. to keep this country. Yes. So until and then y'all want to look at they just want cameras. Right. Damn it. Right. We <laughs> just want mothers are getting mowed down next to their children Jeez, in yep. Walmart. Right. Walmart. Yep. Lord to Lord keep mercy. this country white. Mm -hmm. And y'all looking at us like they right here. They they, always, right they, here. they they the ones you looking for is right. That's not the place for this. Right. We how it's dare you disrupt the debate? Mm -hmm. These people are destroying lives, Killing are taking people. lives yep. in pursuit of their political philosophy. Yeah. And we're just yelling out for justice. Fire somebody that killed a black man, and the black people is talking about they right there. They right there. Get Calm em. down. That's why my man. Mark Thompson says, all the time, we ain't, we ain't gonna, gonna make it. it. We, we ain't way. gonna make we it. Don't we make it. Gonna make it. I mean, I'm with you. I feel the same way. We ain't gonna make it. I'm gonna we be here Mark fighting, Thompson. but I don't feel it. Man. Listen, I'm we... going out in the blaze. Yeah, I don't feel like <laughs> No, you're not. No, you're not. See, this is but why this I am not. I don't feel like we just feel the same. Listen to me. Listen to me. You don't have guns. We are non violent civil rights activists. I am We do not advocate. I'm not non violent. No doubt. I'm against violence. But I'm going to utilize violence to protect me and my family and my loved ones. that's right. The bottom line is when it comes down to that, it's only going to be a few of us on the front line. That mm. word front line is just people just saying, but when it comes down to this, I'm willing to give my life to protect mine. Mm -hmm. So if you got to make a, a conscious decision right now, because that's what this world is coming to. Yeah. That's right. You know, and it's serious. And, and, and as long as this system continues to allow the unrestricted radicalization of all of these thousands of disaffected white men, nobody's going to be at peace. That's right. Mm -hmm. Period. No, but that was yeah, what you said yesterday. Yeah. You're like getting yourself in trouble, don't you? Thousands of... Well, hold on. <laughs> there, uh, okay. There, there, is, there is a... There is a there is a weapon for every single man, woman, and child in America. That's right. There's three. There are, there are almost four hundred million guns right. in America. Ninety seven percent of those four hundred million guns are owned by three percent of the people. So even so, what that really means is that they are out there and they are fully armed. Yep. 
and they are fully prepared. They call militias. They call radicalized white supremacist groups. They they are mentally training. Ill people. They're mentally ill people that are shoot. But they are they there's online radicalization happening of white men, as you say, in America, mm-hmm. and they are being funneled and channeled into these groups and, and, and trained and armed. And there's trigger words coming from the president. And you know, I was have been saying if you just watch the the PBA president, which is I mean, yeah, the PBA president, which is the NYPD. Union, mm-hmm. right? Watch him in his press conference right after Judge Maldonado said that Pantaleo should be fired. He starts saying that um, activists are criminal activists. This, this is the these are the trigger words. He's like they're criminal mm-hmm. activists. Uh, I, I can't even remember all the things he was saying. It was just so much of it that I'm thinking to myself. And he's standing there with all white men. All white men standing there calling people like us criminal activists. And saying how the police are going to slow down and they're not going to do they're their... They're not going to do their jobs that we taxpayers like, pay for. Please do. That's what we've been wanting <laughs> That's you what to we do. ask you. Slow, slow down. down. And don't kill us, right? right don't right. be so quick to kill us. If that's what it takes, fine. But, you know, just watching that, I'm thinking to myself, the, this is the man who is in charge of the police. Right. He's out here calling us criminals. And then when they, he says something about this is not about de-escalation, none of that. Oh, the de-escalation is one thing that we as activists have been fighting for since I can remember. I've been hearing de-escalation since I've been a little girl in the mm-hmm. movement. And he said this ain't about de-escalation, all of that. Then he kept saying she, that's another thing. He said she, meaning the judge, doesn't know what she's talking about. She doesn't know the law. She doesn't know how to apply the law. This lady is a judge and you are the union boss. Who do you think knows a little bit more in this situation? <laughs> the reason why she said that Pantaleo needs to be fired is because he does. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. Simple. Well, we appreciate you guys for joining us. Yes. Thanks As always. Thank you so much. Minister Kristen John Foy, Tamika Mallory, and my son. Is there anything, so much, is, is there any, can they be donating to something? I don't know. I'm just trying to. <laughs> so you can tell them. About you could just, I, uh, the, uh, I founded an organization called the Ark of Justice. I would appreciate mm-hmm. some support online, some social media support at the Ark of, Ju- at Ark of Justice or at Kirsten John Foy. And we can go from there. And so we are, we're requesting that we be invited back soon because my son, myself, Linda Sarsour, and another gentleman by the name of uh, Angelo Pinto have started a new organization called Until Freedom. Mm-hmm. And we'll be launching in the next few weeks. Y'all know That's y'all got an open door policy here. You tell these white people, tell us we got to go. That's right. They might have some problems with us if they if ever they tell, tell you y'all that. you got to go. Think you go. Shut it down. On your own <laughs> Anybody listening, y'all should know out there that y'all going to have some Leave real these problems. People, these people is off <laughs> limits. Right. We I was, shut it I down. I was literally... That I was planning a protest yesterday oh, yeah, about your Instagram post like, Yo. being uh, taken down. I started calling people like, I'm going like, to need you to reshare my post. <laughs> and then we may need to show up outside of Facebook right. offices. Right. We were, were they taking about, down right? everybody? We about that. Yeah, were they we taking did. down everybody's posts? They were. Because I saw other people posted it. Yeah. I didn't know because yeah, yeah, I kept seeing it. Yeah. They were censoring they were people yesterday. Yeah, they, yeah. Hardcore. they made it right, though. But I mean, they got to make it right for everybody. You can't be doing these shadow bands of black people. But the killer's manifesto. The killer from all over Facebook. Was all oh over yeah, the Facebook. manifesto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His stuff but you, was out there. you were the real threat, right? And yeah. you're, and if you're, and, and so we got to restrict your freedom of speech because you want liberation. Right. But the 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 whitening of America, we are with that program. That's right. Lord have mercy. Well, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.